every wadi that I go to, I have to drink from it. Because I actually believe that if you drink from the wadi, you'll come back to visit it again. Our guest today is a daredevil, an adventurer who has a special relationship with exploring Oman's beautiful wadis and canyons. A full-time Oku employee who is also running a multi-chain restaurant and has a flair for specialty coffee. Tune in to Ahmed Riyami. This is Suha Luhebi and you are listening to Oku Podcast. Hi Ahmed, we're excited to have you here with us today. I'm excited to be here and uh, joining your podcast, uh, Suha. Thank you. My name is Ahmed Riyami. I've been working in the integration management office for the past two years. Uh, I have lots of uh, interests as an uh, adventure uh, seeker. I go on lots of hikes. I also own uh, a couple of businesses uh, in terms of food and uh, adventure tourism. I also enjoy my coffee. I have a specialty uh, coffee uh, hobby that really takes a lot of my time. I'm also a father of three beautiful kids. So Ahmed, to be honest, when I see you or when I hear your name, the first thing I would remember is that you're into hiking. And I've seen uh, your videos and the things you post on Instagram, it's crazy. What sort of equipment do you, I, I know that you are, you have a backpack. What do I need to take with me in my backpack? I know there are certain really, really important stuff to carry. So what would be the basics to keep? So each uh, hike would have its own uh, requirements, depending on how long the hike is, where it's going to be taking place, and uh, what, uh, what types of terrain you're going to be going through. I would say the most important thing that you need to take with you is water. Water. What about yes. shoes? I'm thinking about shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll get to the shoes. Uh, shoes is secondary. You can walk barefoot if you like. <laughs> I, uh, I actually did that once and it was beautiful. You actually feel the, the nature on your feet and oh my God. every step you take, it's, uh, it's like nature is talking to you. But uh, I'll start with water. Water is much more important. Hydration is very important, especially here in Oman. It's quite hot. Yeah. So if you don't have hydration, you wouldn't go too far. <laughs> Um, another thing that you'll need is maybe uh, snacks, uh, depending on how long the hike is. I'm thinking sunblock, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if, if you want, if you're thinking about the sun, yeah, there'll be a sunblock. There'll I've be seen a... you coming to the office with a burn on your yes. nose once. <laughs> Sunglasses, uh, a cap to protect your uh, your head from the sun, uh, loose clothing, as you said, uh, hiking uh, shoes. And hiking shoes, it also varies from uh, where you're going. If there's going to be water, are you going to be swimming? Is it all just mountainous? So there are different types of applications for, for the shoes. Uh, at the same time, if you're going to be going for a multi-day hike, you'd need to take with you your tent, your sleeping bag, uh, some light, uh, more food, uh, and uh, more water as well. So all of this, you know, plays a role on what you need to take with you on, on different uh, trails. So, Ahmed, I understand that hiking is a high-risk sport. Uh, it can get really, really risky. Um, I don't want to sound gloomy, but were, did you ever came across any incident or accident that made you think, I'm going to stop, this is not for me, I need to stop? So, alhamdulillah, in the past uh, five or six years that I've been doing my uh, extreme hike, uh, I've never come across a time that I would actually fear my life. Uh, we have uh, trained guides with us, they have certified, we have first aiders with us. That actually makes you feel very safe while, uh, while going on these hikes. Everything has been thought of uh, beforehand to make sure that uh, anybody going to the hike is not going to face a high risk of uh, injury or getting hurt. I think you, you would recommend that people go with a tourism company that does this uh, versus someone who would just pick a place and they, they would go on their own because it's kind of too risky. I've heard of girls going out on trips and, uh, on trips and they're getting uh, stuck somewhere or they couldn't yani, go back. I would highly recommend anybody going on a hike to read about the place before, get a good background of uh, what is to be expected over there, how long the hike is going to take, check the weather, uh, check anything else that can affect the, the hike itself. Um, having a guide is always great. They know the place very well. They've done it many times before. So for extreme hikes, I would highly, highly recommend uh, guides like us. Okay, so 
uh, assuming that I'm going, um, I want to do this, I want to go on hikes, but I'm a beginner. So give me your top destinations that anyone should go to here in Oman. So we've actually categorized the, high, the hikes or the YDs that we have into categories of easy, medium and hard. I would suggest for you to start with the easy and uh, try it out, see how it goes. Like uh, where? Where do you recommend? I recommend uh, Wadi Mibam. It's quite easy. I've taken my kids over there. Where is that? Yeah, that's in uh, Tiwi. Okay. Uh, it's not too far from here. It's about a two hour drive and it's beautiful. Uh, even in the summer, you, s- you can always take a dip in the water just to, to cool, cool down. Yeah. Yes, and uh, they enjoy it. And kids from all ages do it. So if they're able to do it, I'm sure you can do it as well. What else? One destination only? Wadi Hawar is also a very good place. Uh, it's uh, in uh, Wilayat Wadi Bin Khalid. Uh, so many people go over there. Many people go to the tourist part that gets very crowded. But we have a se- secret uh, place that not many people know about. I love that. And uh, it's not touched by many people. So if you go there, um, you'd really enjoy it. It's very easy. It's just like a walk in the wadi. Where were you yesterday, Ahmed? You were <laughs> out in the wild doing crazy stuff. Yeah, yesterday I went to Wadi Bani Uh It's in Rustaq. Uh, it's the, I'll, I'll put it in the medium category. So there's actually uh, swimming involved, as well as climbing, as well as uh, abseiling that's uh, going down with ropes. So you have all of this within, the, in, within one wadi that uh, really makes it exciting. It's called Snake Canyon, right, you said? Uh, the tourists call it Snake Canyon, and it's not because of the snakes. They are, I've, nev- <laughs> I've never seen a snake over there for the many times that I've gone to that wadi. It's actually called Snake Canyon because when you see it from the top, the wadi crosses the mountains like a snake. Mm, interesting. Ahmed, for you, what is the perfect hike? Uh, let me think. Uh, perfect hike for me is to have my friends with me, uh, going to a new place, exploring something uh, new, something I haven't done before, uh, going in a place where the weather is just not too hot, not too cold, with lots of water. I love swimming, uh, and uh, swimming in the fresh wadis of Amman is, there's nothing better than I that. I saw you drinking from the wadis, it's so yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, every wadi that I go to, I have to drink from it. Because I actually believe that if you drink from the wadi, you'll come back to visit it again. Oh. <laughs> so, perfect, uh, perfect uh, adventures would be that, you know, the friends. I think, I think what really makes it is the people who are around you. True. And they're the ones who make it or break it uh, so true. for you. So having your friends around and making new friends as well. I really enjoy that about the hike. Being one with nature, uh, staying away from your phone. from Yeah, disconnecting. Yeah, yeah disconnecting from the, the internet and just being one with nature. Love it. And after that, enjoying a good cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> خلاص, cherry on top. That's the cherry on top. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ahmed, what's the recipe of success you are following to juggle the load of being a business owner, a full-time employee, uh, doing your adv- doing your adventure uh, tourism, you also have a family. Uh, how do you? What do you do? How do you balance everything out? I would uh, put it in two major things. The first thing is uh, don't stress. Life is uh, going to go on with you or without you. So there's no there's no need to stress over the little things. Another thing is delegation. So with my business, I have my partner that uh, takes most of the heavy lifting. With the hiking uh, company, we have people, each one has their own roles and their own uh, thing to do in the company. Uh, Families where you can't delegate a lot, but uh, I have a very supportive uh, wife. And uh, she's 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 the secret of my success with the family. I love the answer, by the way. It's not rehearsed. It's not, huh? Not at all. <laughs> uh, I want you, Ahmed, to send uh, a, bu- a positive message to business owners out there. The, the market is very negative and pessimistic uh, currently. So um, how was your business uh, impacted by COVID? I think uh, most businesses, including mine, got affected uh, directly because of the COVID-19 uh, p- pandemic that hit the world. Uh, the service industry in general uh, got affected. Uh, we struggled. Uh, we had a lot of uh, 
expenses that were uh, accumulating over us. But I think that this is just a time, a phase that's going to pass and uh, we can recover and come back uh, stronger from this. Inshallah. And this I, could, I think is for all businesses. Uh, it's just a time. We need to just struggle now uh, and it will become, become easier in the future. Inshallah. Ahmed, uh, how do you zone out? Uh, because you are doing so many different things. Uh, they are very, very different from each other. So your hobby is not related to your full-time job. It's not related to your businesses. Uh, so how do you zone out from each uh, from each segment in your life and get into the other one with with full force? What is there something that you are doing? Uh, it's uh, not overthinking uh, each one of these uh, stuff. You know, each one has its time and place, and I keep it for that time and place. Uh, I also enjoy drinking coffee. So part of actually preparing my coffee, that's the time when I actually like zone out. I just focus on the coffee, co- focus on the smell, focus on the, the taste later Very on. Very sensory. Yeah, and that actually um, helps me. I've also tried to bring the hiking with the coffee. So after every hike, I'd go up and make my coffee. And I really believe that uh, enjoying a good cup of coffee is enjoying it with good friends. So I actually bring a big pot with me and make coffee for everybody who's with us in that uh, hike. So they can just uh, taste something that I really enjoy, really have passion for and love uh, with everyone, with all my friends. So you're, you're really into specialty coffee and uh, a lot of people think that specialty coffee is a waste of time to prepare. It takes time to brew. There is a lot to be done uh, and so many tools and special measurements you have to take when you prepare one cup of coffee. What do you think? I think uh, anything good in life takes time to to re- really uh, make uh, good, right? <laughs> so after trying speciality coffee and uh, preparing it and seeing where the coffee comes from, yeah. which country, which origin, uh, even which farm, who roasted the coffee and uh, is it light roast, is it medium roast? What's the best way to brew the coffee? to get the, the notes of the coffee. You know, each coffee has its own notes. Yeah, some fruity, some... Some fruity, some uh, nutty, some earthy. So all that you can actually extract from the brewing process itself. So I think uh, relating to that, you know, it, it soothes me just to get yeah. a good cup of the coffee. The whole routine of preparing yes. one cup. Yeah. Yes, true. Yeah. And I enjoy it. And uh, What's your favorite blend? I'm sorry, I don't go for blends. I mm. go for single origins. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> if, I'm kidding, able, I'm if I'm able to get coffee from one farm, that would be like, you know, ideal. Even if it was from one tree, that would be really, really super special coffee. Mm, sounds very uh, special. Yeah. Specialty. I always think that a blend coffee is like somebody sat down and actually tried different types and what he liked and said like, okay, this is what I like. Let everybody else like what I like. You know, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. I have my own taste. I have uh, my own thing that I look for in a coffee. So single origin really does it for me. So answering your question, I prefer South American coffee. So anything from Panama, Colombia, Brazil, these are really, really nice coffees. They have very nice notes. And I actually wanted to prepare a coffee for you over here while having this session. I wish. <laughs> but uh, because of uh, Corona and our HSC says we cannot yes. share food. So yes, it's not recommended. At I'll, this I'll time. share my experience by, with words. Inshallah. And the word in the, the future, inshallah. inshallah. So since we're talking coffee, what do you think about people now? They're going into deeper, deeper into coffee. Uh, I mean in their homes. Everyone now has a coffee corner in their house. So what do you think about these commercial machines? The capsules. Yeah. You don't know when was that coffee roasted. You don't know when that coffee was grinded. And you don't know how they actually, like, what's the process of actually putting that in the capsule? Yeah. You know, there's actually a process it's, like it's that. It's kind of convenient for people on the run. I don't think, uh, yani. For people in who wants a coffee in uh, two minutes, yes. Yeah. But the, the taste is really horrible. Oh, really? I, I really believe that if you really want good coffee, it has to be a whole bean coffee. You have to grind it at that time to actually enjoy the taste. So are you thinking about opening a coffee shop, a specialty coffees? Because you, you have a chain of restaurants. So would you tap into that in the future? Yes, there's actually something brewing in the background mm. and uh, I will share it with you once it's uh, seen light. Yeah.
Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, thank this you, has been great. You. I wish you uh, more and more success, inshallah, in the future. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to share a little uh, slice of my life with you and uh, your audience. Thank you so much. <laughs>